now because it is from the fire that god is his reason it is that flame which has consented to take birth here it is therefore we have got the birth out of flame again it is connected with the tapasya of ashwapati he is getting the boon from the divine goddess in the form of her appearance in the fire there and therefore she becomes the flame here she takes the birth here in fact in the previous canto the vision and the boon goddess savitri the divine mother herself appears and grants him the boon and she tells sashapati i heard your prayer oh son of strength she is calling him the son of strength i have heard your prayer and i am pleased with the prayer you shall have a daughter she of course she doesn't say one she says <laughs> she says one she doesn't say daughter one shall descend actually ashwapati's prayer was here in shivanu savitri specific he says that if the problem of this creation is to be solved if the obstacle which is standing in the way of the divine manifestation is to be removed then that can be removed only by the divine power by the divine shakti by her self taking the birth that is the specific prayer so it is in response to that ashwapati is asking for her birth here whereas in the mahabharata story ashwapati is asking for a son instead of son he is given a daughter <laughs> and he is also told look i got a chit from brahma that he has sanctioned a daughter to you and be happy with it don't question that decision of brahma you accept that you are going to have a daughter and ashwapati accepts it and comes back etc here ashwapati's prayer is specific this creation's problem if it is resolved it is only by the mortal birth of divine shakti that it can be tackled not otherwise divine shakti's birth is what he is demanding and she grants him that in fact we have got that beautiful phrase in the tetel book the mother she condescended to pass through the birth to the portals of the birth that is a death to the portals of the birth that is she condescended she has agreed to come down here and go to that process again. because that is the only solution that is the only way by which things can be tackled here the yoke of ignorance and death which is there on the soul of the earth can be removed only by that divine power by none else therefore the divine mother tells sashwapati grant sashwapati one shall descend he will come here with a conqueror's sword she is assuring him look she will definitely come and win the victory conqueror's sword she will come any obstacle any enemy whoever may stand in the way will be removed by her use of the conqueror's sword and she also tells him fate shall be changed by an unchanging will by an unchanging fate shall be changed the fate of this world the sorrowful condition in which this mortal creation is presently experiencing which we are experiencing that fate of man will be removed only by her by her unchanging will nobody can dislodge her from a determination so that is the kind of a boon savitri divine savitri gives to ashwapati 
who himself is now the lord of the forces of nature lord of life ashapati ashwa life forces lord pati it is the lord of ashapati lord of life forces it is he who gets this boon or the birth of a conqueror of a, of a daughter who will be carrying with her the conqueror's sword one sword is enough for her one sword is enough for her you see in durga the goddess durga she is described as carrying seven 10 weapons dasha praharana 10 weapons in 10 hand she is carrying 10 weapons in 10 hand the different gods give their weapons to her to fight against the hostile forces she is carrying 10 weapons dasha praharana dharini she is durga but in the case of savitri one sword is enough conqueror's sword and one hand so to say she will come and do her work so that is the kind of an assurance ashapati receives not only an assurance that becomes a reality in the sense that soon that eternal savitri who moves in the transcendent beyond time she steps into the cycles of time into the rhythms of the earthly movement she comes back she comes here and steps into the earthly movement and therefore the canto opens with the description of the six seasons through which the year goes around the description follows that she steps into the cycles into the movements of time and she comes here now it is also the description of a full year complete cycle complete cycle is important for a number of reasons one reason is of course very apparent that when she is stepping into the mortal world she must experience all the facets of a year she must undergo she must experience all the aspects of the moments of time summer winter frost dew spring autumn she must experience them all if she wants to be really useful for full year so she has to step into time and experience the full cycle of the year that is a kind of a natural description of her stepping into the cyclic time but in an occult way the more important thing is here is the body of the supreme in this creation here is the body the full body of the supreme in this creation is what the year is so it is supreme herself who is coming here and to acquire that body she has to go she has to see the whole year through it is the year which is the body of the supreme and therefore the description of the seasons not only the description of the seasons here at the beginning of this canto but we have the most remarkable statement by narad he has the occult knowledge of all these things narad he says one year after their marriage of satyavan and savitri satyavan will die this day returning one year after this day returning satyavan must die here again it is the body of the supreme which has to be sacrificed 
a Tewan has to sacrifice his body. One year is the body. He has to sacrifice his body. Why he has to sacrifice the body? Because it is only out of that sacrifice can a new creation arise. A new creation can come only after the sacrifice. So in that sense, Satyavan's death after one year is that body of the year of the Supreme which is offered again to the Supreme. In fact, we can say that <coughs> Very first canto, the last line. This was the day when Satyavan must die. This was the day when Satyavan must die. Line number 342 or 41. Yeah. He must die. Now, again here, the statement is he must die. It is not that he will die. There is a necessity of his death. Therefore, he must die. Satyavan will die would mean as if his death is governed by factors of nature, by fate, by <coughs> contingencies of things and that kind of a thing, as if he is governed in that manner. So it is not will die, he must die. It is a determined death. Satyavan, one year, the body has to be sacrificed, the year has to be sacrificed for the new creation to arise. In fact, this line, Satyavan must die, Satyavan's death is a necessity for the new creation to begin. Satyavan's death is actually, as we have said, the body, the ear, the body of the Supreme, and it is that body of the Supreme which has to die. It has to die to the past so that the future opens out, begins. Now, Satyavan's death in that sense is the second death of the Supreme. Satyavan's death, the second death of the Supreme himself. And with this death, with this second death of the Supreme, a new and marvelous creation will begin upon earth. A new and marvelous creation will begin with the death, the second death of the Supreme. The first death of the Supreme is the most momentous death again in the sense that it is through that death of the Supreme that things have started here, have begun here. The Supreme himself went out totally. He became nothing. He emptied himself out. He died to himself. He produced the void. He produced the inconscience. And then from that thing started happening. That is the first death of the Supreme of going into the void. The first death of the Supreme is going into the void. The second death of the Supreme is the beginning of the new and marvelous creation. So it is in that context that things had to happen. Now, in the first death, which is chanted very gloriously in a very loud voice by the Veda himself, there is a hymn in the Vedas called the Purusha Sukta. Purusha Sukta describes in detail how the Supreme sacrificed himself. And out of that sacrifice to the Supreme, how the creation, how the order of this world began. That is the beginning of this creation, chanted by the Vedam in the nature of a Purusha Sukta, 
the hem of the supreme being purusha sukta the hem of the supreme being with that things have started happening the second death is what is now being chanted in the most glorious way by the poet of savitri the epic savitri is the chant of the second death second sacrifice of the supreme being that is what we are here in savitri savitri would be that essentially you see now so the eternal therefore the body or the ear would mean all that he has sacrificed himself to give rise to a new creation now of course in the case of the first death the supreme simply disappears becomes nothing becomes void in the second death it is necessary that this death must occur in the lap of savitri it must occur in the lap of savitri and it is that divine power in her lap in her shakti in her possession in putting yourself entirely in the hands of the divine shakti that the death will be fructified will bear fruit so satyavan's death is actually in the lap of savitri and if that death has to take place the second death if it has to take place there has to be the presence of savitri here savitri must come here to bear satyavan on her lap and offer him to the divine and therefore we start with again the birth and child is a flame so that this flame will bear the body of the ear of satyavan second death he will die in her lap this is important his death in the lap of savitri and the whole savitri and the whole whole second part of the book second half of the book is now devoted entirely to the ministry of savitri the first is the tapasya of ashwapati to bring her power down here to get the boon one should descend and she will come with the conqueror sword that is the first half the second half now is the work the mission the triumph the glory of savitri here now the seasons move in a cyclic manner here and when the seasons are moving here when such a birth is going to take place we have very beautiful line here 93.17 earth was the comrade of a happy son 9317 earth was a comrade of a happy son so this is what happens this is what happens in the month of spring of course that is the thing but the connotation is now earth is in the companionship of the supreme light It is she who is going to come here in that light. She is going to come here. Earth, a comrade of a happy son, happy son. Here, of course, would stand the daughter of the sun, sun's daughter, Sabitri is the daughter of the sun, and this earth is in the happy company of that daughter. And what happens then? Because of that. we have here time opened its chambers of felicity the cyclic time which is there it has gone through the whole cycle it has opened its doors now for the felicity for the happiness for the bliss for the joy to rush into this creation 
time open to chambers of felicity with that thing with because of that happiness you see now that is the description of savitri that i will hear and it is also a description when she comes here she comes with all happiness with joy in a month of spring and suddenly we have in the last sentence of the section 93.31 we have ashokas burned in crimson spots of flame ashokas burned in crimson spots of flame the griefless tree blooming in crimson spots of flame and the jasmines haunted the enamored air and mango blossoms fed with a liquid voice the coil the coil the birds are singing with a liquid voice and sunlight a great god's golden smile that is the arrival of savitri sunlight a great god's golden smile and nature of course at beauty's festival that is the completion of the year nature at beauty's festival and therefore this is the most opportune moment for savitri to take birth she is about to go here in the spring and if you want to stretch a little here and there in the month of february yeah. <laughs> she comes here <laughs> she. now it is under these circumstances under these conditions that savitri's birth takes place and he says in this high signal moment to the gods 95 94.1 in this high signal moment to the gods so this is the moment to the gods the gods have been preparing for this moment they have been waiting for this moment they were working out things here that things will happen here and therefore it is a signal moment to the gods and it is in answer to the gods it is in answer to the gods that she comes here in this high signal moment to the god answering us yearning and a cry of bliss a great news from our other countries came that is savitri now he says that well there are other countries than the mortal worlds in which we live here the immortal worlds here we are not aware of them the poet is aware of them that look this is not all we are we have other countries we never visit them that is a little unfortunate thing we start better visiting them at least from time to time <laughs> see and enjoy some kind of a vacation there see <laughs> and come back here to do our work on small see so she comes from those other countries here from the transcendental realms her source her station her native home is in the transcendent it is from there that she comes here and she descends here into the earth's imperfect mold into mortality 94.4 she descends into earth's imperfect mold that is the birth of the flame in the imperfect mold and what for she comes here she comes here again and again once more once more once more she keeps on coming here she takes up again her unfinished 
divine task. 